In the previous episode, we covered the critical stages of calving, from preparation to delivery and postnatal care. We shared valuable insights into proper calf nutrition, ensuring healthy growth, and reducing calf mortality rates. In this episode, we shall be discussing the essential aspects of feeding calves, feeding heifers, and feeding lactating and dry cows. It is important for you to know that proper nutrition is vital to ensure the health and productivity of your herd. Let's get started. Feeding calves is a critical stage in their development. For newborns, the first 24 hours are crucial, as they need colostrum, the mother's first milk that is rich in antibodies. After birth, weigh the calf and record the weight in a new card. The birth weight should always be taken as it determines the weight at which the calf will be weaned. It also becomes the reference for calculating the weight gain rate in the first two weeks. The other thing that you should do is to feed the calf 3 liters of colostrum within the first hour of birth using a nipple bottle. You should feed colostrum as many times as possible in the first 12 hours of birth. The ability of the calf to absorb the antibodies from the colostrum is best between the first 4 to 6 hours of birth. After 12 hours the absorption reduces by 50% and after 24 hours the calf can hardly absorb any antibodies at all. After the first day, calves can be transitioned to milk or milk replacers. Whether you choose to use the mother's milk or milk replacers, feed the amount equivalent to 12 to 14% of the body weight of the calf. For instance, 6 kilograms should be divided into 3 equal portions. Concentrates should be introduced after 1 week of the calf's life. Calf starter is a solid feed that transitions the calf from the milk-only feeding stage. The calf starter must be palatable and nutritious. For proper rumen functioning, always ensure that there is sufficient water available for the calf at all times. When the calf is between 28 and 35 days, feed half a kilogram to one kilogram of starter per day. At the same time, gradually reduce the milk or the milk replacer. At the onset of this stage, you should also introduce fresh and palatable fodder to the calf, e.g. lucerne or grass. Always ensure that there is enough, clean and easily accessible water for the calf. Between 28 and 56 days, continue reducing the milk feeding gradually as you increase the forages and concentrates such as calf pellets. The calf should be weaned at about 8 weeks. The weight at weaning should be double the birth weight. If not attained, then milk feeding should continue. At this point, the calf needs 18% crude protein per kilogram dry matter. Before we delve into the topic of feeding heifers, here are a few essential tips to keep in mind. Number 1. Feed high-quality mother's milk or milk replacer until the birth weight of the calf doubles. Secondly, house each calf separately for the first three months to minimize the chances of disease transmission. In addition to that, weigh the calf every two weeks for the first month then on a monthly basis thereafter. Maintain a good record and calculate the growth rate. The aim is to double the birth weight in 8 weeks. At all stages, provide clean water, well positioned for the calf to access. Always check the water levels to ensure that it is refilled on time. Then, ensure you wean the calf when she doubles her birth weight. You should remember to keep a clean and hygienic feeding environment, 
ensuring the calves get the necessary nutrients for healthy growth. Finally, always ensure that the calves pen is clean, dry, free from strong winds, well ventilated, and secure from the hot sun. Most importantly, house the calf away from the older cows in order to reduce the chances of disease transmission. Providing them with the right nutrition is crucial to their future as productive members of the herd. If you pay attention to all these, the calves will grow and become heifers. Here is a sample calf weight register that you might want to look at and possibly adopt in your farm. After weaning, heifers should be grouped according to their size in small, uniform groups. Heifers should be closely observed and fed correctly to avoid the growth slump that can occur after milk is withdrawn. Heifers should achieve a growth rate of around 650 to 700 grams per day. This ensures that they will come on heat at the right time since puberty is related to size rather than age. Note that weight gain may vary with breed. You should monitor the growth rate compared to the age. Growth charts that provide expected weight at different ages are available. Once the heifer is ready for insemination, it is important to monitor the heat signals carefully to increase the chances of conception after insemination. During the last weeks before calving, it is important to introduce concentrates so that the heifer can get used to the new rations. Let us now talk about the feeding of lactating and dry cows. Lactating cows are the backbone of our dairy operation. They need a well-balanced diet to produce high-quality milk. The main aim of feeding the cow is to 1. Maximize dry matter intake to increase milk production. 2. Meet the cow's nutritional requirements, and 3. To maintain the cow in strong health and within the right body condition score. Soon after calving, feed a high-protein ration to achieve peak production during early lactation. Doing this in the later stages of lactation may not result in any significant increase in milk production. In the ration, concentrate feed should not exceed 50%. This is so that the forage part of the ration can be sufficient to support proper rumination or optimal functioning of the rumen. Animals that are fed properly at this stage come on heat within 100 days and achieve a calving interval of one year. That is, between 360 to 390 days. In addition, give lukewarm water to the cow immediately after calving down to promote appetite. Maintain the recommended feed ration with clean and sufficient water and minerals. This will ensure that the peak milk production is maintained for a longer period and that the monthly rate of decline in milk production remains between 8 to 10 percent. You should ensure that the forage fed has more leaf than stem, is palatable, has the right size of chops, and is not moldy. Ensure also that the ration has sufficient fiber component to boost the rumen function. For energy, Use concentrates that are high in digestible fiber rather than starch, for example, wheat or maize bran. Finally, ensure that the ration has at least 15 to 18 percent of crude protein per kilogram of dry matter. Maintain a high-quality forage as described under Phase 2. Again, as an energy source, Use concentrates that are high in digestible fiber rather than starch, such as wheat or maize bran. 
Reduce the amount of concentrate feeding in accordance with the reduction in milk production as the lactation period advances. Dry cows are those that are temporarily not producing milk, usually two months before calving. During this time, their nutritional needs differ, focusing on body condition and preparing for the next lactation cycle. At this stage, feed the cow with a ration that has all the feed components such as forage concentrates, minerals and a balanced ration of water. Ensure that you reduce on protein levels, the aim of balanced feeding at this level is to realize the full potential of the cow in the next lactation and to minimize health problems at the time of calving. Some of these health problems include ketosis, milk fever, dehydration and dystocia. Gradually reduce protein and energy levels in the ration at this stage to a maintenance level. In other words, withdraw the concentrates. At this point, the milk production has reduced. If the cow has been a low yielder, stop milking. Once the milking has stopped, pressure begins to build up in the udder and cuts off further milk production. In case the cow is a high yielder, gradually stop milking. For example, drop the afternoon or evening milking but retain morning milking. This is to reduce milk synthesis that is caused by the pressure buildup in the udder. After milking is stopped, treat or infuse all the quarters with long-acting antibiotics to prevent mastitis from developing. We would like to conclude by saying that feeding our cattle is a never-ending responsibility. It is one of the most crucial aspects of keeping a healthy and productive herd. Remember to consult with a qualified nutritionist to create a tailored feeding plan for your specific herd. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Feeding Calves, Heifers, Lactating and Dry Cows. Stay tuned for our next installment, where we'll be discussing other important topics related to cattle farming. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, take care and happy farming.